welcome to the first in a brand new series. It's only TV, but I like it. You know, in history, TV has travelled a long, long way. In fact, mine came all the way from Rombolo's in Watford. You want one? A good deal? Speak to Bill in sales. Mention my name. Give him that special handshake. You like <laughs> Let me introduce you to our teams. We've each been carefully hand-picked by answering the simple question, are you available? <laughs> our two captains are two of the most able-bodied men ever to lead a team bravely into battle. Sitting portside with a pugwashy air about him is the curmudgeonly but cute Mr. Jack D. <laughs> Listing ever so slightly on my starboard side, the horn blower of the panel game, the boy least likely to get caught in the crow's nest, Mr. Julian Clary. <laughs> Joining Captain Jack tonight, a woman who made such a convincing pensioner that when she fell asleep in a dressing room earlier today, she had her hip replaced. <laughs> Please welcome Carolina Hearn. Completing Jack's team, well, if cooking is the new rock and roll, he's the show Waddy Waddy of the kitchen. Please welcome the original little chef, Anthony Wall Thompson. <laughs> Opposing them on Captain Julian's right hand are an unusual pair of Geordies, unusual in that they have their records in the shops rather than on police files. Please welcome <laughs> Anton Deck. <laughs> Finally, joining them is the star of Cold Feet and, of course, the Fast Show. In fact, he's become universally known up and down the country as that bloke off the telly. <laughs> Please welcome that bloke off the telly, John Thompson. <laughs> we begin, as we mean to go on, with trivia, the kind of information that's almost entirely worthless, like Jeremy Beadle's CV. <laughs> We'll show you three seemingly arbitrary pieces which are the clues to infamous moments of British television. Your task is to find the story that links them. So, Jack's team, can you tell us what memorable TV moment connects these three clips? I looked and saw your eyes in the shadow of your hair as the stranger sees a stream in the shadow of the wood. And I said, my faint heart sighs are me to linger there. Oh, I like that indeed. <laughs> But the numbers actually employed in industry have fallen sharply in the last few months. It's not clear that falling unemployment necessarily means more people are getting jobs. There you go, kids. The ingredients were Oliver Reed, Keith Moon of The Who and a distillery. What do you think the connection could possibly be? Uh, well, I, I, I think uh, that was, yeah, Oliver Reed with possibly the most irritating girlfriend in the world there. <laughs> If you read them a poem, they go, oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, well, Oliver, Re Oliver Reed and Keith Moon, uh, both sort of famous uh, big drinkers, big time drinkers. Keith Moon drank so much he thought there were seven people in the Who. What's the nut? Or nine in Keith. <laughs> the Who had a song called Who Are You? And there is a malt whiskey called Who Are You? <laughs> I, I very much That's dispute that. <laughs> You want to check it out now, Sonny? I don't want to check it out now. <laughs> don't get hard now, come on. Oh dear. Save it for later. <laughs> um, well, what, do you, what do you think then? Give us your answer before I go to that. Well, this is just probably is wrong. Nice? No, I'll probably be wrong. I won't say it. Oh, go on. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. Is it something to do with drink and them putting their own fringes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That might be another answer that yeah. we can Oh, okay. What do you think? I Team I, I say it's who are you is the connection. Who are you? You're maintaining that ludicrously, rather pathetically, than this. <laughs> a whiskey called Who Are You. I don't think there's any that's need the to have a go at me this early in the show. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm just giving you the chance. Okay, well, uh, that's your answer. Okay, we'll, we'll see if you want in a minute. Before we do, though, what would you say it was? Okay, well, um, is there anything to say? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, <laughs> I think um, <laughs> Moon is the key. Am I, am I, am I on the right track? Well, I'm waiting for your answer. I've got to clear Keith you. Moon and uh, Oliver Reed mooned um, <laughs> due, uh, due to the influence of alcohol on the Aspel show. Let's see if uh, either of you are right. Sort of. 
Mary, Mary, Mike, listen. I <laughs> Nobody, a lot of, which camera am I on? All of them. All the lights. <laughs> I used to sing a song years ago, and a great friend of mine was Keith Moon. Um, I'd like to sing a song. Nobody knows this. Is the band okay? And it was called I Was Known as the Wild One. And it, and it, and it goes roughly like this. It goes roughly like this. It goes, I was known as the wild one by all the folks in town. Last of this. Can I get over there? But I've never ever. Do, I, can I do well, thank you for coming. It's been a wonderful. <laughs> Sweet baby Moses. <laughs> well, um, the connection is, of course, Oliver Reed's notorious drunken appearance as a guest on Aspel. Uh, contrary to public opinion, Oliver Reed went nine years without touching alcohol. Mind you, on his tenth birthday, he went out and got totally back. <laughs> So one that is neither of you are white, you are way off the mark, um, <laughs> but you were close-ish, so I'll give you one point, I'm going to give you one point for that. One for Julian's team now, can you piece together the item of TV trivia connecting these savoury clips? <laughs> Some women do have a very high sex libido. And I, I, I am that sort of person. I mean, I, I feel it. I love sex. They were a male stripper, Lynn Perry, and one of nature's predators. What do you think could possibly be the case? Well, something for everyone there. <laughs> Yourself, mate. Uh, <laughs> Boys, yeah. anything to no. say? No. Lynn Perry have um, <laughs> joined up speaking. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, she what? didn't she have collagen implants? She did. Which yeah. come out of arses. <laughs> Hush your mouth. <laughs> she once had an encounter, shall we say, with the male stripper. So that's going to be your guess. That Lynn Perry had an encounter with a stripper. And <laughs> she had her... She was an animal. An animal. Yeah. Nice. Okay, well, would you like to chip in before? I mean, I'm going to take that as your answer. Would you like to chip in? Do you want to... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, what? Well, it looks like there's a shot from behind us. They've all been taken from behind. <laughs> OK, well, let's see. Well, that's your guess, is it, that they've all been taken from behind? Well, I can't say that's incorrect, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> you're saying there's a connection between Lynn Perry and an encounter with a stripper. Let's see if indeed you are correct. You just go on! Go on! What have you done? Oh, my God! Oh. <laughs> We've all done it, Jonathan. We have not. <laughs> Can I just say, Jonathan, I was young and in inexperienced. It's my first time on television. You fill a pouch it. ever so nicely, Jack. She only licked it. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, uh, I believe the scores now stand at Jack limping behind with a rather soulful nil point, and Julian's team romping happily into the lead with a magnificent four. Our next round is inspired by that classic children's TV series, Blue Peter, the show that took a lot of unpromising material and made Sarah Green out of it. <laughs> we assembled the basic ingredients from which a genuine Blue Peter creation was made and we gave them to our team shortly before the show. You were given a tissue box, a shoebox lid, a budgie mirror, a margarine tub, a thimble, small carton rings and paper fasteners, a lid of a tube of chocolate sweets, two spray can tops, some sticky back plastic and a piece of toweling. But what do you reckon Blue Peter's Valerie Singleton actually made? from those things. Right, this is more your sort of yes, thing. Yes, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a uh, uh, little dress you up table right. for, for a dog. Yeah. See, she right. sits there, like that. Um, with a little bit of lino on, on the bottom. <laughs> little, that, that's a chair, is it? kind of thing. You put that as a chair. Oh, yes, so it is. Ah. See, so. <laughs> right. I, I get the idea that you while away many an hour. <laughs> <laughs> 
just there. Oh, Dick, what about if that's a washing machine? Yeah, she can wash it. Very good. God. And then she can go on down to the shops. <laughs> and come back again. Um, so it's, so it could be. Address the table, Julian. Well, thank you for you your things. contribution. Okay. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Yes, you <laughs> Now there's paint here, and there's like pointy things that could scratch the surface of skin. <laughs> then you add the paint with the brush. There's the paint. There's the paint and the. Have you still got the brush? There's the brush. There's the brush. Oh, for goodness' sake! There's Sorry. the brush. All right. So then, there you go. The, the, the scratching thing there. Then you've got the, the towel to mop the blood up. <laughs> No, no, it was Val Singleton, not the, the butcher of Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> Tattoo and piercing studio. Dolly's first piercing. Dolly, Dolly's first tattoo and piercing studio. With, with that on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> not as an afterthought at all. Julian, are you going to uh, um, yes, some well, I, order? Yes, well, I yeah. dismiss both of those ideas. And uh, obviously, <laughs> it's a doll's B-Day. <laughs> That fits in there. That is the bathroom wall, and you do a little toilet brush with that. Mm -hmm. it sticks out the side, and you put your towel over. <laughs> and uh, it's 100% it's functional for Dolly's. It had to be a bee day, didn't it? it couldn't <laughs> be. <laughs> Jack, what do you think uh, she's uh, possibly created? Well, I mean, we've got we've got the same ingredients here. So, uh, Anthony, first of all, who you? Um. Okay. Well, I used to throw these at uh, Rolls Royces. <laughs> I used to, I used to loosen the lid and throw them. You're the bastard. <laughs> are you uh, are you sure you really want to share that with us? <laughs> it's a long time ago. No, I, 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 she she plays with dolls. Good. That's... Okay. She. Who's she? The cat's mother. Yeah, exactly, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, great as this, you know, great fun as this game is and everything. I have no interest in anything like this. There's more important things in life. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, is it? Very good. Okay. There, is the, there is the rational approach, certainly. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I would like to say what I what I believe it is, and I've made it. You're going to show us the one you made? Yes, I am. <laughs> Well, what it is, it's, it's uh, Dolly's um, cocktail party, and uh, that's a table, and here she is, she's Dolly. She's having a nice party, <laughs> and she's got a cup there, like that. It's actually what it is, it's the, uh, it's going to be very big next Christmas, it's the Caroline Ahern um, party doll set. <laughs> and she stands there, and then after half an hour, just goes like that. I never had a table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's... Um, that's yeah. both charming and possible. Julian, you had a chance to make yours. Let us see your. Now your... look at mine. You see, it's, it's actually got water in it. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. so is cheating somewhat because it's a model of your bathroom at home, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's just see how close uh, you both were. Here is what Stop Valerie Singleton now. actually <laughs> came up with. I've thought up an idea that I think uh, would suit a doll this size rather well. And it's this, it's a rather elegant bathroom unit. And I've just put the doll in and you can see how well it fits. So, uh, out of possible three points, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give you guys um, none whatsoever <laughs> for your sort of prostitute's bedroom knock-up. And I'm going to give you a two out of three because the bidet was in the bathroom region and you used the paint beautifully and also you've got a lovely tie on. Thank you. So the scores now sound well, Jack's team. I'm afraid I want you to try harder and see me later. You've still got no points whatsoever. Julian, you and your compadres have a beautiful and fully rounded six. Okay, now old people still have a role to play on television. What could possibly improve Last of the Summer Wine, apart from a really harsh winter in home for... Um, <laughs> old folk take centre stage in our next round in which several senior citizens describe some of their favourite TV programmes and personalities. The sooner the teams can guess what they're talking about, the more points they will score. So teams, on our screens now are Bill, Dolly and Margaret. For ten points, I want to know what you think they're on about. I can't think of anybody not liking it. It is an excellent situation. That was on uh, singing on the wireless it, last week. What, what day was it? Tuesday when I was indoors. <laughs> singing their, their song they're going to come out on a record. They're all friendly when, when they meet each other, they go out. 
to shows than that. And to see when there's anything on, you generally see them at the shows as well. You know, if like um, Frankie Vaughan or anybody, uh, what's his name? Uh, you don't see him there, do you, Frankie Vaughan? No, it's good, yeah. <laughs> Oh, bless him. Oh. Okay, well, uh, for ten points, who do you think they could be on about? He said it was an excellent situation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I see, what, is, what is he talking about? He said he loved that's, that's what I'm asking you, Jack. <laughs> Being in the bath, I don't know, what? I think I know. Do you? Yeah. Black and white minstrel show. Because they, they all think it's PC still. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Happy black on. folks singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minstrels. Oh, yeah. right, it's the black and white minstrel show. What do you oh, think? Okay, you're going to be black and white minstrel show? Yeah. You're both terribly, terribly wrong mm. and I'm embarrassed to be sitting near you. Here's more old folk describing the same show. Can anyone get it this time for five points? I think more people watch it than ever. In certain parts they were running a very good business. And they're doing other things as well. <laughs> a new series, they want to watch it again because they'll overdo it, they're not careful. Look at the time when they took up building they knew nothing about and built a, sw a swimming pool for people and made a success of it. That wants some doing. I think he believes that everything he sees on TV is true. <laughs> What, what do you no. think? Who do you think it might be? What are they thinking? Oh, yeah, with a bum, isn't it? We're, we're, thinking, bum. we're thinking Challenge Annika by now. <laughs> Challenge Annika, that's your guess? What? Challenge Annika? Okay, they've guessed Challenge Annika. Yeah, what would you your guess? Can't say that. No, Changing Room. Correct, Correct. Changing, yeah. room. Changing Room. Yeah. They're both very good guests. They're both well, completely wrong. Okay, so fingers on your buzzers. The team that buzz in first picks up the points that are left on the screen. Let's go. They're not as good as they were. They're running down on their material. Oh. Uh, Anton Deck. <laughs> As if we'd be so mean. <laughs> she listens to their, their business, what they're doing, and she goes and sorts them out, and she said, well, she said, well, I'll, I'll have him, there's some, some bloke who they're going to go after. One is rather round and blunt. <laughs> Food and drink. A little weak, she must be, actually. She's open to class, ain't she? The, yeah, the stout one. EastEnders. No, Don't touch no. me. I know the answer. He knows the answer. Yes. No, well, hold on. You buzz and he said he said he Now we've had a bus over here. Like lunch, is it? No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. Do you want to have a guess? There is it? Birds of a feather. Birds of a Feather was the long-running sitcom created by Maurice Gran and Lawrence Marks. Leslie Joseph was created by the Jim Henson Workshop. <laughs> so the scores at the end of that lengthy round means that, uh, Jack, you and your team are doing very well indeed, but I'm afraid you still have no points whatsoever. <laughs> Julian, you're in the lead with a magnificent eight. Oh, wow. I say, in the spirit of the game, well done, the four of you. Mm. <laughs> Can I say Sorry. that we've all sat here and none of us have really acknowledged the fact that Jonathan Ross's career has emerged again. He's reinvented mm. himself <laughs> after a string of failures. <laughs> Go on, give us a snog. You don't want to be brother. <laughs> He was on that floor in Honeyford show like a few days later and she was saying to him, so oh, I've just seen the headlines that you kissed Mrs. Merton and he went, Oh, that night I was so pissed I kissed Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> I can only apologise for him, he's obviously a cad. He is, I know where she is because I, I didn't even know he, his lips were coming my way. <laughs> no, that's, I believe know. that's what that bloke said when he was uh, sitting near Len Perry, didn't he? That <laughs> Enough of your, enough of your tawdry life. Let's move on. <laughs> Our next round concerns something to hide behind or obscure the real you, like a disguise, a pseudonym, or Sophie Weiss Jones. But in this round, it's masks. At my command, Jack and his team will each don a pair of attractive Velcro goggles, upon which Julian will attach one of three TV face masks of his choosing, all belonging to a well-known show. Okay, goggles on, please, Jack's team. If you'd uh, goggle up, obscure those twinkling, seductive eyes. You're That's full of sort shit. of the point of this. <laughs> You're like your brother, full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that really cool? He said he wasn't bad. I don't know. All this <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. 
The object is for Jack's team to find out who they are by asking Julian, John, Anton, Deck the right questions. Julian's team can only answer yes or no. So if you want to uh, put the mask on now, please. Caroline, don't panic. Coming on. <laughs> Sorry. Press that on. Yours. <laughs> Okay, there we are. So, Jack and team, to us, to us, you now look somewhat different. You have to try and work out who are you and what is the show. If, you, if you've just tuned in, welcome to this special edition of Children in Need. Am I, uh, a mem am I in Take That? No, no well, can no. he stop fingering himself? That's cheating. Yeah, stop feeling the shape of your your, your Anthony eyes, Anthony. Put right. your hands down where you can see them. them. Have I ever been out with Roger Stewart? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, only a matter of time. <laughs> officially, no. But some of your kind have. <laughs> Are we actually a TV show? Yes, of course yes, you are. are. Yeah. The whole show is about television. <laughs> it's all part of the series, Jack. Is all it? right. <laughs> are they human or cartoon? Are ah, they, uh, uh, are well, they cartoon? One of the three of you is... Is he human? He's, yes. Well, he's sort of hu he's human he has like. a human appearance. So, one of us is human looking. Yeah. So and which the other two are Yeah. That's so, a brilliant deduction. <laughs> Uh, You're not letting anything get by you tonight, are you? But it's for children, is it? Is it a children's television show? It's quite show? popular with children. Yeah, um, yeah, say so. Not is anymore, it? is it? I believe it's been discontinued. It's uh, now defunct. Is right. it Doctor Who? Yeah. 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 You are Doctor Who. You are K9, the robotic dog pal, and uh, Anton is a Dalek. I'm a Dalek. Can we take them off now? You may take them off, please. Okay. okay. God, that was great fun. <laughs> It's your turn now, Julian's team, if you'd care to don your goggles in much the same manner. And Jack will now transform you each into a famous TV face. So get those goggles on. I want to smack this into your face so hard. <laughs> no? What are you about talking the about? Popular choice, sir. Suits you. <laughs> no, no feeling your heads. I, I give, get your hand out, whichever one you are. <laughs> All right. Um, if you're ready, start your questioning. Well, I don't know where to start, really. Is it a daytime television program? No. Yes. <laughs> You're a bloody good guess. Do you ever want? Do you own a TV? Am I Eamon Holmes? Well, I'm sure you've been mistaken for him, but no. Should have been a sex symbol. Yes. 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 I think it was, they were his own you brothers. You know what I mean. <laughs> I, as I it's understand. It's a half, right? One of them was sacked. One of them was sacked. One of them was sacked. Was them was sacked. Was one, oh, yeah, one was sacked. Well, nothing to do with drugs, as no, far as I know. Nothing to do with drugs. Do I? Mean, I ah, oh, no, it is. What, who? It's the, the Teletubby. Yeah. <laughs> Take off your mask. Very well done. Good guessing. And so, at the end of that, Not I see the scores are now. You're doing a, a little bit better. You've still got a long way to go. Jack and friends, you've got four. Julian still way in the lead with a wonderful 12. Can you tie me up? It's a golden rule of quality broadcasting, always to leave the audience wanting more, so we carry on with the catchphrase round. Here's a selection of the opening words of some well known TV phrases or sayings. The teams have 90 seconds to complete as many as possible. Are you ready, fellas? Okay, Bugs Bunny. What? Jack. Mixomatosis. <laughs> In his later career, perhaps. Now, what? Mm. What's well, a good red wine to go with roast <laughs> rabbit? <laughs> you should not have. <laughs> what? Up, uh, Doc. Yeah, well done. Robert Lindsay, who was uh, Wolfie Smith, he said, Power 2. Antor Deck. Newcastle United 3. <laughs> Power 2. 
The yeah, well done, John. Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo said, well, the song is with Scooby Doo, we do, where are you? We've got. Jack. Another unconvincing ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. We've got to out Thelma, she's a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> Thick and fast now. I'll give you one more shot of it. You, you were in trouble. No, we've got some work to do now. Larry Grayson, he was famous for saying, Shut that. Shut that door. There, well done. There you go. Well, one point there. Point. Bagpuss. Remember the song where Bagpuss, oh, Bagpuss, oh, fat furry cat puss, wake up and. Take me roughly over the breakfast bar. <laughs> Julian, I've asked you not to mix pleasure with work. Please get back to the show, will you? Look at this thing that I bring. Jimmy Savile. I was a bunch. That van. Yeah, there you go. Well, Paris, he said, can you tell <laughs> what it is yet? Yeah, well done, you. Silver Black. Sadly. <laughs> Claxon means we're out of time. And all that means the final scores this evening are, Jack, I think you knew it was coming, but here it is anyway. You've lost. With a meagre and somewhat feeble six points. But the right number of team members. Yeah. <laughs> Julian? Lovely job. 15 points. Very well done. I guess my imaginary cat to you. Don't go on, look at them. They did great. They did not, they look like a bunch of rent boys. You know the difference between them and... <laughs> Actually, now you mention it. <laughs> that was its only TV like it, although if you've ever invited to watch it at Lynn Perry's, politely decline. <laughs> You. Uh, we leave you with another. Oh, yeah. no. uh, uh. <laughs> it's like watching your nana. <laughs> well, I hope I never see my nan doing that. <laughs> we leave you with another look at the Aspel interview that never was when Ollie Reed had one pint of orange juice and something too many. Thanks for watching. Good night.